So based on the discussions that we had in the past few slides, we realized that uh, it is very important, very critical for us to know at what point of this curve, this exponential curve, uh, our biasing or our operating point is, right? So if I'm here and my signal is basically, I have a little perturbation here in voltage, that's going to be the that's going to be translated to little perturbation in the current. However, if I'm here and I have like basically if the perturbation is let's say plus minus 10 millivolts or plus minus 5 millivolts here, that's going to be translated to well this much of current or maybe I should go flat here. This much of current variations, right? But if I'm working at this point and I have the same variation, exact same variation in my VBE, I realize that well, I'm going to have this much current changes. Well, I seem to have a lot of problem with drawing straight lines. Uh, so it is very important to know where we are at this exponential curve because the slope is the slope of this exponential curve is very important, and that's why we actually have a name for this slope because it's really showing how good of a transistor we have uh, or how good of an amplifier is this transistor for us. We're going to call this transconductance and I'm going to tell you in a, in, a, in a second why this naming but transconductance and we're going to use GM for that okay shows a measure of how well the transistor converts voltage to current right so basically how strong is my transistor in amplifying signals or converting voltage variations at the base emitter to current variations at the collector side, right? I know that I have a, remember, I want you guys to, like, I want to have a flashback to the first slide or first, first time we start talking about transistors. Remember, we said that these transistors are voltage controlled current sources and all that matters uh, about like having higher and higher gain is the k of that voltage controlled current source right and this transconductance is really that k for us right because we know that there is some sort of a current source there that is dependent on the voltage variation the variations on the base emitter voltage and i know that this is going to be k times that well vpe or delta vpe for that matter right and this K, the bigger this K, the better of an amplifier we have, right? We're going to get to like basically defining this voltage dependent current source for signal or for small signals in a, in a few slides. But this is basically, the, I mentioned this to, to kind of like basically uh, give you another perspective into why GM or transconductance is important, right? So based on this curve, because it's the slope of this curve, we know that GM is going to be the derivative of IC, the collector current over or with respect to derivative of VBE, right? With respect to changes in VBE, okay? Now, why transconductance? Well, it's conductance because it's current over voltage, right? Remember that voltage over current was called resistance and one over that or current over voltage was called conductance. Why transconductance? Because it's not really IC over VC. It's like if it was the voltage of it, like if I have a resistor here and I'm talking about the voltage of the resistor and the current of the resistor, that would be resistance and conductance, right? But if I'm relating the current of uh, another terminal to the voltage between two other terminals, then it's like a transfer involved in it, right? So that's why I call it transconductance, okay? Okay, so this transconductance is really, as I mentioned before, is the strength of our transistor uh, in how well it responds to changes in the base emitter voltage, or like basically uh, the measure of how well the transistor converts voltage to current, right? If I want to show it visually, this is, again, the same exponential plot. Imagine you have a delta V, that it could be a very small sinusoidal signal, right? And basically, I want to know how this perturbation, these sinusoidal changes in the base emitter voltage could be translated, are translated to current changes in the collector, right? And then basically I'm defining this GM as these, uh, the, the de derivative of IC, the, the basically delta IC over delta VBE or derivative of IC with respect to VBE, okay? Now, well, 
since we know what is the expression of IC, we can actually calculate this, can find the, the real expression for GM. So if I do the D over uh, the VBE for this expression of IC that I know, the, the exponential expression, I'm going to get this. And since I know that this is again IC, I can actually say that GM is equal to IC over VT. So really my GM is the current over the thermal voltage. So this is really like this, this, this equation really is another way to actually see that trade-off that I talked about, right? That you can see that for higher GM, I can have to, I have to actually spend more current in my transistor. My DC current has to be increased, therefore I have to pay it with power, right? But really it's, it's telling me that uh, I have a linear relationship between IC and GM. So my relationship is going to be something like this. With the VBE, I have the same exponential relationship because the derivative of the exponential is still an exponential. So if I wanted to plot GM versus VBE, it would have been something like this again, right? It would have been still exponential. But versus IC, I have a linear relationship. And the, the slope of that line is really 1 over uh, VT. Okay, so 1 over VT being, uh, I don't know, like since VT is 26 millivolts, uh, you can actually calculate what kind of, uh, uh, like if you, if you consider that 26, like if you round it up to 25 millivolts, then 1 over 25 milli, it's basically uh, somewhere around 40. Okay, uh, just to get an idea about uh, like basically how the like numerical values that we should that we could have for the examples that we saw in the two cases that we analyzed we saw that for the first case we had a gm1 where ic changed by 780 microamperes for 10 millivolt change in the vpe so i would have uh, i had a gm of 0 0.078 right for the second case, which my biasing was at 770 millivolts, GM2 was, I saw that I can actually have, uh, well, I think it was 1.7 milliamperes over 10 millivolts. So my GM would have been 0 0.17. Okay. And the unit that we use for GM is really its amp over volts. Uh, we use actually something called Siemens. So this is, uh, we, use, we use capital S to show it. So this is Siemens. And this is 0 0.17 Siemens. Going back to the um, expression that we found, we can actually uh, see one other thing from, one other thing that we already know from another perspective. The first circuit that we discussed where I had the BGT or the bipolar transistor, if you remember, I had this uh, this two volts supply with the resistor and then I had my BGT here to ground and I had this microphone here without any biasing, right? For that circuit, I realized that I cannot really have a gain of 10 unless I have this RL being, I don't know, billions or millions, hundreds of millions of gig ohms, right? Uh, now I can see actually the reason for that. So when I have a signal that is only 10 millivolts here, it's kind of like you have a, the, the base emitter diode that you had in your transistor. You only turned it on with a forward bias voltage of 10 millivolts. So it's not really on. It's almost in the equilibrium, right? So I only applied, I, I remember that from the past. I remember that when I was discussing diodes, I knew that I have to have a voltage around like 700 to 800 millivolts to actually fully turn on a diode in the forward bias uh, forward bias condition, right? With the 10 millivolts, I probably have very little current. And actually, I did calculate that current, and I realized that, that that current is in the order of 10 to the power of negative 16, right? And looking at this expression, I can see that with that kind of current, I would have had a very small GM. And that's why my, my, my transistor was a very, very weak amplifier, right? And that's why I needed a uh, huge, huge, gigantic resistance to kind of compensate for uh, my weak amplifier, okay? So that's one thing. 
the last thing I want to actually uh, uh, to, to for you guys to pay attention to is something uh, about one little kind of a subtle assumption that we made here that I want to actually uh, kind of highlight it. And that is the fact that when I was talking about these small perturbations, let's say that like, for example, for this exponential curve, right? When we say that our operating point he is here, and I'm saying that I have little perturbation here from here to here, and I'm talking about the slope of the line in this in this curve, I'm making an assumption in an in in an implicit way that I, I didn't actually say it out loud, but I kind of assumed that. And that is, I'm assuming that the slope of this exponential uh, for that range of signal, let's say this is 10 millivolts that I have, for the 10 millivolts variations, the slope of my signal is pretty much constant, right? Because I said that the slope of that signal is really my GM, right? And that GM is really how I uh, kind of translate the variations in the VBE to variations in the IC, right? Now, this is a very, like, an exaggerated way of visualizing 10 millivolts. The 10 millivolts in, in reality is probably just if I want to show it uh, in a real scale, it's going to be just a dot, right? It's going to be just a little bit of a line that I have here. So the assumption that the slope of this exponential for that little variation is pretty much constant, meaning that uh, in a sense, I, if you zoom in, for example, well, let's actually talk about that operating point. If I zoom in here, I'm going to see something like this, right? it's basically pretty much linear for 10 millivolts. So if this is 10 millivolts, I'm assuming that the slope is actually constant. And why is that important? Well, it is important because I'm assuming that, well, not assuming, I know that my signals or variations of my signals are going to be amplified with this slope. So if the slope is actually changing, then that's a very bad news because it means that, for example, if this is my V in, let's say this is T and this is my V in, right? And let's say it's a half sinusoidal. So I go from zero to 10 millivolts and back. And if I have higher slope when I'm at higher, like when I'm at 10 millivolts compared to when I'm at, let's say one millivolt, then it means that at the V out, I'm going to have a different kind of a gain. So like maybe initially I have a smaller gain and then I have a larger gain. And then that means that my sinusoidal is going to be distorted. Yes, I might actually have the 100 millivolts that I wanted. I get the range that I wanted, but the gain that I wanted to be 10 for the entire range of zero to 10 millivolts is not really 10. Let's say that it's basically, it's 12 when I have a 10 millivolt input and it's like eight when I have a one millivolt input. So it's not really perfect 10. On average it's 10, but it's not really, it changes, right? So it is very important for me to understand that all of these discussions about transconductance are applicable when I'm talking about a signal that is small enough that is not that that they can actually uh, assume my exponential uh, a linear kind of a function for that range of signal. So in this case, when I'm talking about this 10 millivolts, I'm assuming that 10 millivolts is small enough that the slope of my exponential is more or less the same over the 10 millivolts range. So from 750 to 760 or from 770 to 780, right? If it turns out that the slope is actually having a significant amount of change, then I cannot really consider my signal as a small signal, meaning that I cannot really say that my slope is always the same. I cannot really define a GM that is a number there, right? My GM, because you can imagine that my GM is actually dependent on the slope, well, we know that it's dependent on the slope. And if that slope is actually changing, it means that my GM is changing. In a sense, if you actually look at the numbers that, in another way of looking at this is that you can see that my GM is IC over VT, right? So what does that tell me? That tells me that my changes in the signal should be in a way that the IC doesn't change a lot because 
if I see changes, then it means that my GM is changing, right? So if you remember when I added this 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 uh, battery to this circuit, I added a battery that was 750 millivolts. Now I know that the 750 millivolts is large enough that a change in a change of 10 millivolts in it is not that big of a deal, but it might be actually, right? So this was just an example. It might turn out that this 10 millivolts is actually a lot and I cannot call it a small signal. To call it a small signal, I actually have to have, let's say one millivolts or something like that, right? So that like I can say that the current that I get for this transistor at the collector for 750 and 751 are pretty much the same. So I can assume safely that the slope of my exponential is the same. So this is very important. This is really uh, constituted the, the, our definition of a small signal versus let's say large signal. So we call it something, a signal is small signal uh, as long, basically when the signal is a small enough not to change our operating point. It's a small enough not to change our biasing, right? Going from like, basically you had it, you saw that the, the how, how big of a change the biasing could make, right? We saw that for two different bias points, GM1 and GM2, that were uh, off by just 20 millivolts, I got two different GMs that, well, are different by a factor of two or even more than a factor of two. So that tells me that well, probably 10 millivolts wasn't really a small signal. So it was just an instructional example, but I probably would have been, it would have been safer to say that like a, a one millivolt kind of input would have been a safer choice, right? But what I'm trying to say here, what I'm trying to highlight here is that my small signal, a signal is a small signal as long as it doesn't change the biasing condition. So like 750 and 770, are two different bias conditions, but 750 and 751, probably the same bias condition.